Hey everybody, Sexy Matt the Pharaoh Wizard here. So long time fans of my show would know, I actually try and keep it very positive on this channel. Uh, I feel like the loud, screaming internet reviewer, the angry at everything guy, is kind of played out and a little boring. And even on my show, uh, Raiders of the Lost Comic Movie, where we specifically go out, or, out of our way to watch bad, forgotten movies, we still try and find the positive in them. And in my personal life, I try to actively avoid bad movies. Why waste my money and my time on something I know I'm not going to like? Um, you know, I still have the choice to see whatever movie I want, because I run this channel and I say what I'm going to watch. So that being said, sometimes you get tricked. And I think this year I've been tricked quite a lot. So it is worth bringing up some of the bad movies. So, come with me, and let's count down the top seven worst movies of 2018. Why seven? Well, I didn't want to artificially inflate the list uh, to ten. I didn't feel like there was ten full ones that deserve being called terrible. Uh, but I also didn't want to do a top five because I think all these are worth mentioning. So let's do this. Number seven, The Meg. Yeah, The Meg. Okay, it's slow on this list because, yeah, no one expected The Meg to be good, but it is still worth mentioning. It's, uh, even for a so bad it's good movie, it's still pretty bad. It takes itself a little too seriously to be a so bad it's good, but doesn't take itself seriously enough or does anything good with the source material to actually make it good or interesting, even in an over-the-top sense. So, it's even bad for a bad movie. Uh, it still can be fun if you see it with the right people and you go in expecting a bad shark movie. So, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it, it is still bad. And, of course, it writes in its own sequel where the Meg dies and now there's bigger Meg. And that, that was dumb. It's a dumb movie. Ah, stop eating our boat, Jaws. Rawr, I'm going to eat your boat, and then I'm going to eat you guys. Rawr. Oh, my God, what's that? It's bigger, Jaws. Oh, my God, now we have a common enemy. We have to work together. Number six, Cloverfield Paradox. So this one is bad for several reasons. One of them is outside its own control, and that it's the follow-up to 10 Cloverfield Lane, which is an amazing movie, one of the scariest, most intense movies I've seen in a very long time, and one of John Goodman's greatest roles of his lifetime, and we're following it up with The Cloverfield Paradox. It's obviously never meant to be a Cloverfield movie. It's a different script that they threw the Cloverfield name on. It's got plot lines that go nowhere, it's got misused actors, the crap way they try and tie it into Cloverfield at the end feels just tacked on and um, unnecessary and one of those moments that you think was a big surprise but actually really is kind of dumb. And it really just kind of ends up being the poor man's Event Horizon. Like that's basically this movie is, you know, a cheap knockoff of Event Horizon. And I put it a little bit lower on this list because I'm not sure how serious we're supposed to take uh, s streaming movies. Um, you know, because like if you compare it to like a regular movie that you see in the theaters to like a made-for-TV movie or a cable movie, yeah, they're not as good, but a cable movie can be good for its own right. So, but where do we put streaming in this? Is streaming supposed to be compared to big movies? or just within their own other streaming movies. I don't know yet. So I'm comparing it to real movies, and yeah, it's crap for a real movie. So there you go. Stop farting! Number five, Ready Player One. So this one's on the list because either the screenwriter or Steven Spielberg or both completely missed the point of the original source material. The book Ready Player One is really a warning and kind of a dark tale of being obsessed with not only pop culture but technology 
And when you let those obsessions get away from you, how you can miss real life. And the movie just turned into, them damn kids are always on their phones. And also it turned into, remember that, the movie? I remember Chucky. I remember Megazords. I remember Gundam. And yeah, and the yeah, the book had all sorts of pop culture references, but they made more sense within that world. This one really just became Membadat the movie, and it really missed the point of it. Um, it missed how big and deep the lore of the Oasis is, and how important it is to the world. And not that it's just a video game, but it's a way of life. People go to school, people go to work, people travel, people meet and get married all on the Oasis. They, in the movie, is just a video game. So it totally misses the point of the original source material. And even on, I think, on its own, it's kind of a bitter old man movie. And I didn't care for it. Oh, I remember. Number four, Venom. Why this movie made so much money, I will never know because it sucked. I'm sorry, it sucked. The CG was crap. The writing was crap. All the actors were just getting their lines through with the bare minimalist of effort. The ending battle was just a glob of CG where you couldn't tell where anything was or where anything should be. It's crap. It's a terrible, terrible movie with some maybe good ideas in it, but overall it's a crap movie, and I don't know why it made so much money. Um, the Venom symbiote looks terrible. The CG is awful. I mean, really, it's, it's a really bad movie, and unfortunately... It's the best version of Venom we've gotten on film. So yeah, I uh, this at this point we'll probably get a sequel. So let's see what the sequel does. But man, it's a rough start. Whoa, it's Space Marshmallow. Uh, where do you think you're going? Uh, uh. Dad, no! It could teach us the secret of interstellar travel. If he's so smart, how come he can't stay out of my mouth? Number three, Red Sparrow. Oh, I bet you forgot this movie even came out. It's such a nothing of a movie. The The mystery of it is bad. All the Russian accents are bad, specifically Jennifer Lawrence's Russian accent. It really felt more like an excuse for Jennifer Lawrence to show her boobs, and I thought we were over that as a society to have movies that were specific to a uh, actress showing her boobs, but here we are. Because that really seemed the point of this movie. There was nothing done or interesting with this idea. It was just nothing, and I really think it's going to be forgotten really quickly if it isn't already. It was just a whole lot of nothing. Wow, those are the Russian people? I mean, granted, you do think of bears on unicycles when you think of the Russian people, but they're all bears on unicycles? Bears on unicycles, everyone. Number two, Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom. Oh boy, where do I even start with this? So, as I like to call it, Jurassic World, Magic Dinosaur Adventure Island, and also Ma Dinosaur Adventure Mansion, just was a failure. Uh... I was on board with Jurassic World. I enjoyed it a lot and was excited that they breathed some life back into this franchise. And I was ready to see what next they do with it. And boy, this is what we got. It's sure a thing. Um, so the island stuff could have worked. But then they it had some weird emotional moments where like, we're supposed to be scared of the dinosaurs. Then immediately after, be sad for them for dying. Uh, I had the really bad comic relief nerd guy who's such like the average nerd. Oh, oh, hurry! I'm in a dinosaur island! And the, like, dinosaur vet that's never seen a dinosaur, that made no sense. And then they moved to a mansion, which makes even less sense. 
Because, like, okay, the close quarters dinosaur thing worked in the first movie because even though, you know, they're in a building and they're trying to get away from the dinosaurs, one, they had them trapped. Two, they were still on stuck on the island full of dinosaurs. This one, they're on American soil. You could just go out of the mansion, run away, come back with rednecks with 50 cows, and just kill all the dinosaurs. Movie over. Why was this a thing? Why did they bring them and try and do the in a mansion? They're dinosaurs in a mansion. It makes no sense. They're too big to be in the mansion. It makes no sense. Uh, and the sad twist that came, really you could see it coming from a mile away of the daughter being a clone was tacked on and yeah and the bad guy being obviously the bad guy uh, and even him changing suits when he decided he's gonna be a bad guy was just cheesy over the top and dumb and this is just a fail of a movie uh, nothing worked for it in my eyes they didn't do anything new or interesting with the dinosaur idea it was just just bad uh and they even tried to like spice it up at the end like the next movie is dinosaur apocalypse except you kind of forget we're in america we have a lot of guns and i hate to tell you this but dinosaurs aren't godzilla they're not bulletproof just just shoot the dinosaurs they'll all be dead it's fine it's fine so yeah this just was bad all around and i did not care for it That is one big pile of shit. So here we go. The movie I hated the most from 2018. The one that inspired me to even do a worst list that I have never done before. The worst of the worst. Here we go. Number one, The Predator. Yeah where to even begin. So the new things that the Predator brought to the franchise were Bigger Predator, Predator Dogs, and Predators editing their DNA to make them stronger hunters. Problem with that is Bigger Predator and Predator Dogs were both done in Predators. So nothing new or interesting there. The DNA thing, I guess, could have worked, except they wanted to add autism to their DNA because apparently autism's a superpower now. It is not a superpower. It just comes from a place of someone who doesn't understand how that works, how people with people on the spectrum work differently, and how that mindset even works. I don't even really know how it works. All I know is that anyone who knows anybody with autism that saw this was very upset at it. And I'll take their word for it. On top of that, although not in the movie because they had to cut it out, they hired a known pedophile, a convicted pedophile, to be on set with a movie that has children on set. And they were well aware of it when they hired him. And when they got caught, they had to edit him all out. So that's a thing. And on top of that, let's add calling the kid with autism, uh, retarded, so that's great. And also, let's make fun of Tourette's, because that's still funny, right? We're making fun of Tourette's still, that's, that's a thing. And most of these came from our quote-unquote heroes. So yeah, it is in bad taste, it's oddly cruel to people and it doesn't add anything new to the franchise and the big surprise thing at the end this whole thing movie was revolving around this thing that's gonna save humanity is a fucking man predator suit a predator suit that a man can wear what is this movie I don't know how it went so wrong, but it did go so wrong. Everything fails with this. It is definitely the worst Predator movie. Even outside the franchise, it's a terrible, terrible movie. It's outdated, it's cheesy, it's cruel. 
I mean, my favorite podcast, The Weekly Planet, did their worst to best episode where they talked about the worst and best of the year and giving fake awards and having all that. And it really just turned into two hours of kicking this movie because it deserves kicking. It is terrible. Um, It is the worst movie by far. Absolutely. And it makes me doubt Shane Black as a director, as a writer, and it makes me really want to give up on the Predator franchise as a whole. So yeah, that's a thing. So the Predator... It's terrible. Once we wrap up the Gladstone account, we're going to need another CPA. Sounds great. What's your number again? 324 762. Uh huh. Oh. Oh, oh, son of a bitch. I accidentally set one. I'm so embarrassed. You should leave. Hey, happens all the time. So, those are what I consider the worst movies of 2018. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments below. What was your least favorite movie that you've seen all in 2018? Let me know. And share this video with anyone possible. That would be great. And give me a th- thumbs up because I need more positive reinforcement in my life, even if it's digital. So, I'm Sexy Matt the Pharaoh Wizard. Until next time, hold on to your hold slots. I hate a-